Hey guys, today we are going to look at factoring trinomials when a equals one. We're gonna answer the question, how do I factor trinomials that have a leading coefficient of one? So trinomials is when we have three terms. They're gonna look similar to this. And when we factor them, we're trying to figure out what two binomials multiplied together equal this trinomial. So let's go backwards. Let's multiply a couple of binomials using FOIL and see if we can spot any patterns, okay? So I'm gonna do x plus two times x plus six. You can use FOIL or box method. I'm just gonna use FOIL. So first times the first is x squared. Outer times outer is 6x, 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times 6 is 12. And then when I simplify that, I get x squared plus 8x plus 12. Okay, so I had the numbers 2 and 6, and then I ended up with 8x and 12. So think about how two and six can relate to eight and how, can, how it can relate to 12. Well, I know that two times six is 12, which is how I got that. And then to create an eight out of two and six, I added those together and two X plus six X was eight X. So two plus six equaled eight, which was that first number. And then two times six, equaled 12, which ended up being C. So let's see if that same pattern happens with this next binomial. I'm gonna use FOIL. So first times the first is X squared. Outer times outer is negative three X. Inner times inner is negative five X. And then last times last is 15. And then when I combine like terms, I get X squared minus eight X plus 15. So my numbers in the binomials were negative five and negative three, and then I ended up with negative eight and 15. So the 15 makes sense, negative five times negative three was 15. And then negative five plus negative three is negative eight, which is that um, B term. So the same pattern happened here I did negative five plus negative three, and that's how I got the coefficient of x, negative eight. And then I did negative five times three, negative three, and that's how we got 15, or that c value. So that is the pattern when we multiply the binomials. We end up with a trinomial x squared plus bx plus c, and b, is the numbers from the binomial added. And then C is the numbers from the binomials multiplied. So we can use this pattern to help us go from a trinomial to the binomials that multiplied to get that trinomial. This was n plus m, and c ends up being n times m. So here's those steps in a little bit more structure. Remember, we always want to check for a GCF first when we are factoring. And to factor this, to figure out what two binomials multiply to this, we need to find two numbers that add to b and multiply to c. I like to set up an X like this just to help me keep my numbers straight. You do not have to do this. It just helps me visualize it. And this can be the hardest part coming up with those numbers. So if you set this up and you put the number that you need to multiply to here and the number that you need to add to here, it can help you just visualize it a little bit better. And then after you get those two numbers, you figure out what two numbers add to B and multiply to C, you are gonna use those values to write your binomials and then we can always check by distributing with FOIL or the box. Okay, so let's start with this first one. I need to figure out what multiplies to 14 and adds to nine. Okay, so I'm gonna set up my little x. I need to figure out the numbers that multiply to 14 and add to nine. If you are not sure 
then start listing out factors of 14. I know 1 times 14 is 14, 1 plus 14 is not going to be 9, 2 times 7 is 14, that will work because 2 plus 7 is 9. So now I'm going to put 2 and 7 in my x right there. So those are the numbers that I can use to write my binomial factors. So my binomial factors are x plus 2 times x plus 7. And we can check this with FOIL. x times x is x squared. x times 7 is 7x. 2 times x is 2x and 2 times 7 is 14. So I get x squared plus 7 plus 9x because 7x plus 2x is 9x plus 14, which was what I got up here. So I know that I did this correctly. So the factors are x plus 2 times x plus 7. Okay, let's look at this second one. I have a's, but it's the same process. I need to figure out what multiplies to c. So what multiplies to negative 18 and adds to b. So adds to 3. So if you can't think of the numbers off the top of your head, then just start listing out factors of negative 18. I know negative 1 times 18 will work. Um, that doesn't add to 3, though. Negative 2 times 9 does not add to 3. Negative 3 and 6, oh, that will add to 3. So negative 3 and 6 are the magic numbers. So that means that my factors are a minus 3 times a plus 6. Okay, number three, I need to figure out what multiplies to C. So what multiplies to negative 63 and adds to negative 2. And I think it's 7 and 9. I need to make sure I'm making the negative 2 negative when I add together. So that would be negative 9 and 7. Negative 9 times 7 is negative 63, and that adds to negative 2. So my two factors are x minus 9 and x plus 7. Okay, let's look at number 4. I need to figure out what multiplies to positive 24 and adds to negative 11. So since I'm adding to a negative but multiplying to a positive number, that means that both numbers are going to be a negative because that's the only way that I'll multiply to get a positive and add to get a negative, is a negative and a negative. So let's start listing out negative numbers that add to, or multiply to 24. Uh, negative 1 and negative 24 is not going to add to negative 11. Negative 2 and negative 12, that will not add to negative 11. Negative 3 and negative 8, that would add to negative 11. So those are the two magic numbers, negative 3 and negative 8. So that means my factors are x minus 3 and x minus 8. All right, number 5. I should have been mentioning this all along, but remember we need to check for a GCF first, which I have a GCF here. These numbers are all divisible by 3. So I'm going to take out a 3 first, and then I'm left with x squared minus 5x plus 4. Okay, now the 3 GCF is going to be a part of my final answer, but when I'm factoring the trinomial, I'm just going to look at that x squared minus 5x plus 4. So I'm going to figure out what multiplies to 4 and adds to negative 5, which would be negative 1 and negative 4. Negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4. Negative 1 plus negative 4 is negative 5. So I have my magic numbers, so this is how you would write your answer. You have to put the GCF first, that's still a factor, 
and then x minus 1 times x minus 4. Okay, number six looks like I'm going to have a GCF again. I can pull a five out of all of those terms, and I can also pull a y out of all of those terms. So 5x squared y divided by 5y is going to be x squared, and then negative 15xy divided by 5xy is negative 3x, and then negative 140 divided by negative 5 or negative 140y divided by 5y is negative 28. Okay, so now I'm going to factor that, figure out what multiplies to negative 28 and adds to negative 3. And I'm going to list these out. I know one needs to be a negative and one needs to be a positive to get that negative 28 when I multiply. So negative 1 and negative 28 wouldn't work. Negative 2, negative 14. Oh, it would be negative 1 and positive 28. That still won't work. Negative 2 times 14, that's not going to give us negative 3 if we add it together. Negative 3 won't work. Negative 4 and 7. So that will give us a positive 3. And then if I switch the signs, that will give us a negative 3. So 4 and negative 7 multiply to negative 28 and add to negative 3. So the final answer is my GCF first, 5y times x plus 4 times x minus 7. Okay, the last two are equations. I have to solve these equations. And remember, equations when we have x squared can be solved using the zero product property. So factoring is a part of that. And now that we know how to factor trinomials, we can go ahead and use those steps for the zero product property to solve this. So remember, the first step for zero product property is make sure that the equation is set equal to zero, which it is here, so we're good. And then the second step is to factor. So I need to factor x squared minus 7x minus 30, which is a trinomial where x squared is just x squared. So I'm going to figure out what multiplies to negative 30 and adds to negative 7. And I believe that would be negative 10 and 3. Negative 10 times 3 is negative 30. Negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7. So now that will factor into x minus 10 and x plus 3. So it was set equal to 0. I factored it. And now the last step to solve with the zero product property is to set each factor equal to zero. So let's start with x minus 10. I need to set that equal to zero. And I would get x by itself by adding 10 to both sides and I get x equals 10. And then the second equation x plus 3. I'm going to set that equal to zero. And then subtract 3 and I get x equals negative 3. So my solutions here are negative 3 and 10. All right, let's look at number 8, another equation with an x squared. So we're going to use the zero product property to solve. So the first thing I need to do is set this equation equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 24 from both sides. That'll be the easiest way to set it equal to 0. And I get 2x squared minus 8x minus 24 equals 0. So it's set equal to 0. Then the second step in zero product property is to factor. So before I can factor this trinomial, I notice that all of the coefficients are divisible by 2. So I'm going to take out a GCF of 2. And I'm left with x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals 0. Now I am going to factor that trinomial 
by figuring out what multiplies to negative 12 and adds to negative 4. And I believe that would be negative 6 and 2. Negative 6 times 2 is negative 12, and negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. So that trinomial will factor into x minus 6 times x plus 2. Okay, so I have set it equal to zero, I have factored it, and then the last step is to set each factor equal to zero. So let's start with x minus six, I need to set that equal to zero. So I'm going to add six and I get x equals 6. And then x plus 2, I'm going to set that equal to 0. So subtract 2, and I get x equals negative 2. So the solutions to this equation are negative 2 and 6. Okay, there was one factor on this problem that I forgot to look at. So we did x minus 6 equals 0, and we did x plus 2 equals 0. 2 is also a factor, but let's look at what happens if I set 2 equal to 0. That is not true. There's nothing I can solve for to make that equation true. So we just kind of throw that out. So according to the zero product property, this could be zero, but if I set it equal to zero, that doesn't work. Two is already two. There's nothing we can substitute in. So that's why that just kind of gets thrown out and we just look at those two solutions.